Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Country Morning Creations. I am here making a planner actually for a coworker who has kind of, we're two weeks into school and she has just been amazing for me. So I wanted to make her a little something special. What I'm using, this is part of the kit that I have for, um, it's the Shabby Rose Planner Kit. So it's very similar and works well with the Shabby Regency Rose Kit, um, and it uses a lot of the same papers. However, some of the things that I've done are to create things like pages that look like this, where it's got notes on it. Um, and for this one, I'm using this set. So what it is, these have a um, light color where the month can go. And then when you fold them back and forth, not the same direction, then you get, this is a full month spread. So there's five weeks this way and it's Monday through Friday with a place for notes. And the way this gets put together is you put together your paper so that it goes back and forth. So for example, these are the same pieces of paper on this side and they're the same on this side. So in order for this to work, you then take one that you fold kind of right way and one that you fold inside out and put them together. And now you have that. Now there, I have a whole variety of different styles of um, planner pages. You could put this together in a variety of ways. This is just how I have done it. The first thing I want to do though, this is the cover, and I've printed it out on regular paper because I plan to laminate this. I wanted to make it a very durable cover, and I don't know if you all have been around long enough to remember when laminating covers was just a really huge thing. Um, a lot of people were doing it, so what I have here, like I said, I'm just putting this in here. This is a, um, it's actually a, I think I want to say it's like nine by 11 and a half. So there should be a quarter of an inch, basically all the way around this. And then I use a Scotch brand, not a real expensive, um, uh, laminator. So All right. Now this has been laminated, you can see by the reflection. I want to just measure this though, and um, because the way I'm going to fold this, I want to make sure these edges are even and it looks like they're not quite even. Now that I've squared up the laminating, I'm going to use, this is a We Are Memories Keeper cropper, and it's got a 3 8 and a 1 8 inch. The corners are really sharp, and I want to round them real quickly so that they are no longer sharp. And that just gives it a little bit of a rounding. It takes it back to more that edge that it was before and there aren't any sharp corners at all. So it's hard to see, but it's just rounded that a little bit. All right, now that I have this down, we're going to score it because I need to make a small, um, like a, uh, Spine. 
That's the word I'm thinking of. So I want to create something that's like a small spine. If this was all the way over here, that would make this five and a half would be the middle. However, and actually what I may do, this is one of the nice things about this. I can take this and flip it over. Let me see if I can get this to work. Or I can pull this out all together and now I can line this up right with the edge and now it's right at five and a half and 11. So five and a half would be the halfway mark and I'm going to make a quarter of an inch spine for this. So I'm gonna come over to the, um, so five and a half, I'm gonna to come to three eighths and score that and then go the other way to the 5 8 mark and score that. This also is going to give us our um, uh, it's going to give us the um, place to put our grommets. So I folded that one and we're going to just fold this one also real quick because I want to put grommets in this so that it we can change and the cover is reusable and she can change out the planner whenever she would like plus it will help to hold the whole thing all right so next up we need to put some grommets in here and they don't need to be real big so i'm going to use these smaller ones they're the eighth inch uh, so I need to move that to the eighth inch, if you can see that. And I know that I used this on the larger setting, so I'm flipping this around as well as flipping this around so that when we go to set the grommets, it's all ready. And if you're ever not sure which settings you need for what size grommet or any of the other things you may be sit setting, uh, there actually is, if you've lost your paper, there's, uh, you can look it up online and it will tell you exactly where to find those things. So I am going to just come in a little bit so that it's down into the paper and put a hole there. And then I'm going to go the other direction as well and put a hole kind of in the middle there. Then we simply seat a grommet in each one of these holes. Let's see if I can pick one up. And we move this all the way to the top. And I like to push it up into the piece that uh, is going to set it. That way it moves um, with it and it doesn't get off centered. So I'm going to put this other one in now and we'll set this one as well. While we have the big bite out, uh, I plan to put a closure on this also that will uh, tie it and, and hold it shut. So we're gonna go ahead and put those on it. For this, I am going to use the bigger grommets, and so we need to flip these back. There we go. Nope, that's not right. Wait. Oh, nope, that was right. Sorry, I was confused. There we go. Now I have everything correct. So my thought is I am going to poke these holes somewhere in the middle here. Uh, I do not trust though that I can do this well. I am going to mark them on the inside and just come in just a little bit. Oops, I can't do centimeters. So I'm gonna come in just a little bit and I like to do it at about four and a quarter and let me grab a grommet to see how far in I need to go. These are the bigger ones. So if I come in far enough, I'm gonna flip it upside down. 
<laughs> if I can get it to flip. There we go. I'm going to flip it upside down and then we're going to come down about four and a half inches so that it's just inside. There we go. And I don't know that my pencil will mark that. We'll see. It's, yeah, I can, I can actually see that. So it made an indention. So four and a half actually is splitting the difference from the top to the bottom. So I'm gonna do that again on this side where I take this and put it in. So it's inside and four and a half. And we're going to mark that one as well. So we're going to come back here to the, I moved it back to the 3 sixteenths mark. Uh, I'm going to put that there. Punch that hole and punch that hole. Now, for these, I want them also to be on the outside like I did with these. Um, let's see, that's not a shiny one. I don't want the shiny ones, hold on. I want the not so shiny ones to match. There we go. So again, you wanna push this all the way to the front. Put, put that in. Oh, I'm having a terrible time with this. I keep knocking it out. Hold on. There's that. And I'm going to grab one more not shiny one. This was a set of different silver ones, some shiny, some not. So that's now the cover is finished. We have the cover and I'm going to set aside all of this stuff as well and grab the book. So this is actually ready. It is, what I did was I printed both sides of 12 pages um, and this could technically, you could just bind it this way. However, I want to hold it together a little bit more securely. And as you can see, this is going to stick out all the way a little bit past the edge of the uh, laminate, but that's okay because now it's you can see through it. And it will line up top and bottom and then the closure will keep it closed there. Now, I'm gonna try this. I'm not sure I can staple through 12 pages. That's an awful lot. Um, Now, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and just give this a good old regular binding. My sewing machine probably would go through all of this as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a good old five hole binding. So for binding this, the first thing I want to do is to hold my pages together with some paper clips. It was a trick I learned a long time ago uh, and I swear by it to keep all of my pages even with each other so that they don't all fall apart, especially if you're dealing with a junk journal where it's going to end up all over the place. This is my binding cradle that I have. You don't need a binding cradle. You totally could just do this um, poking it through where you want. Uh, I actually do have a tutorial on how to make this binding cradle. But I'm doing a five hole, so we're gonna start in the middle-ish. And then we're gonna to go to the top about, oh, I don't know, quarter of an inch inside. So to make this, this would be a three hole binding punch. So you have three holes. I always like to do a five hole. I feel like it just holds things together better and that's just a personal preference. So because this is a single signature, I did not measure everything. 
I do have templates that I use though when I do need to measure everything. Real briefly, briefly, if you have never done a five hole binding stitch, this is how you do it. Measure out your um, thread. I measure it about three times, so I have a little bit of extra. One, two, three. And then let's cut this off about there. And it's pretty easy. I'm going to put the bow on the inside of this instead of the outside, although it totally doesn't matter. I have my needle book. Yes, that's a Nick the Booksmith needle book that I have. She did a tutorial on how to make needle books, so I made myself one. I am using upholstery thread for this, so it will be a very sturdy bind to it. And so you go through the middle to the top. This is just like a three hole binding one, except at this point now, instead of coming straight down, we go back up through the top hole and then back out through that second hole this way. Now we're going to go all the way to the bottom. So technically you could do this even as a seven, as long as you've got odd numbers, seven, nine, however many you want to do, uh, holes you want to punch, you can do this that way. As long as you use an odd number, you're fine. All right, and I think I need to pull this just a little bit. And then we're gonna go back out this hole and then back to the middle. Once you come out the middle, you want to make sure that you have one thread on one side and one thread on the other side of your binding. Uh, so let's see, let's get this pulled tight. And now we have our two pieces of binding thread. Make sure they're they're pulled tight. So I always pull this up really tight and then I check the back side and just snap it everywhere. This is how I find anything that may be a little bit loose. Because loose is bad. The whole thing will fall apart if it's loose. I tie a square knot. So square knots are pretty uh, sturdy and don't tend to come undone. So right over left, now take your left one and do it over the right one. And that is a square knot. And then we're just going to tie a bow with the remaining thread. And let's grab that. There we go. And do a little adjusting. And I know you could also do the rabbit ears. That works just as well if you would rather do rabbit ears for your inner bow. Last but not least, we're almost there. I am going to put this in. Now, you could do this and tie this with um, some elastic and elastic would work to hold this in as well. I want to use just some uh, twine. Again, I'm going to measure it three times. One, two, three. Cut that off. And then all we do, you can go either way. You could put the bow on the inside or the bow on the outside, but since I already have a bow on the inside, I'm going to put the bow on the outside. And so we just run that between the pages Put this out. This is also a really simple way you could do a binding if you wanted to do a binding this way for a no sew binding for um, something. And one of the things I learned is that if I pull the knot all the way up to the top, uh, let's see if I've got my ends fairly even. If I do the knot up at the very top, it uh, tends to hold better. And because this will slide, it will slide through and that will make it, we can slide it back down to the middle if we like, or we can leave this at the top. So I've pulled that up to the top and then I'm going to 
Let's make sure this is good and tight. I need to do the other knot here. There we go. Now it's good and tight. We just tie our bow and then we can either leave it at the top or because it's so tight, this may be a little bit challenging. There we go. We can slide it back down. The other part that goes with all of this is going to be these stickers. Um, I have some stickers that can be used in there and then I have all these different days, the, the months and things so that those can go in there. And you'll see that these fit perfectly on these parts right in here. Now, last but not least, we need a closure because as you can see, it wants to flop open. I am going to grab some, uh, some sorry silk. I love this dusty rose color. It doesn't need to be massive, so I'm going to make it about and I always double it through here because I feel like, um, one, it makes a bigger, fluffier bow, and two, I feel like the sorry silk, just a single knot won't last very long. All right, so there's that one. We're gonna cut the other piece as well. These are pretty long, that's okay. So for this part, to close it, I am going to simply take my sari silk, poke it through from the front. Let's see if I can get it to go. Yep. And then I simply run this through here and do the same on the back. And then we simply tie this up like this, kind of like a regular journal. So there we go. Now I have my planner. I have all the monthly stickers that will go with it, as well as some bonus stickers. These are also part of the kit are these bonus stickers. I printed them two to a page, so they would be smaller, but they can be printed single pages, and there's more of these as well. And that is my planner for a coworker. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial, and I hope I've inspired you to be creative today.